This will be video number 61 in our uh, series Electrical Circuit Analysis. Um, in this video we're just going to consider a very simple circuit. You can see we have a battery, a resistor, and a capacitor um, all hooked up in series. What we're going to do is consider how to find an equation that tells us the amount of charge on the uh, capacitor at any time. Remember that for a capacitor it's charge Q equals whatever capacitance it has times the voltage. And what happens is that once this circuit becomes complete then electrons come from the negative terminal of the battery they accumulate down here on the capacitor as a result of that, there are electrons from this positive plate that leave it and go to the positive terminal of the battery. So even though there's no current in between these plates, it's still as if there's a complete circuit here. And as that is going on, then negative charges accumulate here. And then when the electrons leave the upper plate, positive charges accumulate here. So there's a voltage that develops across these two capacitor plates. And eventually, this voltage equals the battery voltage. And the whole current stops. And we can think of this um, with a simple um, uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law. Pretend that here we have a complete circuit. And now we'll think of it in terms of conventional types, the way it's written in the textbooks that the current goes like this. So there's a voltage drop across the resistor. And then if we sum the voltage drop, say, in this direction, like this, so minus to plus, we have E. And then going through here, we have minus IR. That's the voltage drop across the resistor. And then the voltage across the capacitor, that's Q divided by C. Or, and of course, that has to equal, those had to sum up to 0. We can solve this for I. And we'll have I equals E over R. minus Q divided by RC. And when we have the final amount of charge accumulation on the capacitor so that this voltage equals the battery voltage, then at that point the current is zero. We could have zero equals E over R minus the final charge on the capacitor divided by RC, or get rid of this, and we have, bringing this over here, we have E equals QF over C. And of course that makes sense. Here we, we'd have from here, the voltage across the capacitor is Q divided by C. Then when you have the final charge on the capacitor, that's when this equals E. So again, we have the battery voltage equals final charge in the capacitor divided by uh, its capacitance C. Now, we said that we we're going to solve a differential equation. And we can do that then by considering what I is. I is the instantaneous rate of change of the charge. So for example, here we could say that I equals dq dt using just elementary calculus and that will equal c dv dt and this would be the capacitor circuit since this is in series the circuit has to be the capacitor current 
this is in series, and the current has to be the same everywhere. Now, when we say capacitor current, again, we're not implying that the current goes across these plates. What happens is electrons accumulate here, and they get repelled on the upper plate, and, the, and then the electrons from the upper plate go to the upper terminal of the battery. So again, it's behaving like it is indeed um, a complete circuit. But then we'll write this equation not with I, but with dQ dt. So we have dQ dt equals E over R minus Q over RC. We can combine these together. Let me get something like C times E minus Q divided by RC. So we have dQ dt equals this. And you can probably see where we want to go with this. You know that the integral of dx over x, that's the natural log of x. So if we had dq and we had this in the denominator, it would sort of resemble that, that we can take this over to this side. So we can rewrite the equation like this, dq divided by this, will equal 1 over RC dt. And then we can try to integrate. R and C are both constants, of course. We can leave that to the outside of the integral. So we'll have it like this, and then we have this integral. Now, this sort of resembles this, dx over x, dq over q. Um, but we have this constant. C is a constant. The battery voltage is a constant. So we have this constant minus q. So it sort of resembles this, but not totally. And of course, the way that's handled is to uh, fake it. So it does get to be in that form. So let's see. Let's make some room here. We'll say, try saying this, let u equal this. So we can say, let u equal c times e minus q. And if we do that, let's take the differential. So we have du, then take the differential on this side, Again, the capacitance, that's a constant. The battery voltage, that's a constant. That differential is zero. And then we'll have minus dq. And we're going to put the minus sign over on this side. So we have this. So with this substitution, dq, as you see here, is minus du. So we have the integral minus du, and then CE minus Q, that's U. So this equals minus the natural log of U. But U was this. That was our substitution. So let's put it in here. We have CE minus Q. So this integral equals this. So let's write that right here. We have minus the natural log of C times E minus Q. And we didn't put any limits on these, so we will have an arbitrary constant of integration call that k prime. And then the right-hand side, this would be even simpler. This would just equal the integral dt. That's just t time. So we have t 
divided by RC. And again, another arbitrary constant of integration. We can take this over here. So here we have one const, a constant minus a constant. That's just going to give us, of course, a constant. So we can call that one, say, k triple prime. So we get rid of this stuff. And now we have this equation. And Let's multiply both sides by negative 1. So we have minus here and minus here. Now remember how it works with natural logarithms. If we have e, say, to the natural log of x, that's just x. So if we, on the right-hand side, have e to this power, then we do the same thing over here, we'll have e to this power, but e to the natural log of something just gives us that something. So e raised to this power, and e raised to this power on this side of the equation, because of this relationship, it's just going to be c e minus q. Well, on the right-hand side, we have e to the minus t divided by rc minus that constant. And also remember how it works with exponentials. Um, e, say, to the a plus b, that's the same thing as e to the a times e to the b. So we can rewrite this. This will equal e we have minus t divided by rc and then we have e to the minus k to that constant there but here of course e is just a constant and this is a constant so we have a constant raised to a constant power again that's just going to be a constant, so we'll call it k. So right here, let's put in k times this, and we don't need this anymore. So let's see what we have. We have c times e minus q equals this. Let's just rewrite it. c e minus q equals some constant times e to the minus t divided by rc. Now, the way our simple circuit is set up, when t equals 0, there's no current, so there's no charge on the capacitor plates yet either. So when t equals 0, q equals 0. So when t equals 0, that is 0. And that equals k. t is 0, so we have e to the 0. Of course, any number to the 0 is just 1. So we have c times e equals k. So k is just the battery voltage times the capacitance of our capacitor, we can put that in right here then. So this equals C E times that. And of course the whole purpose of this was to get an expression for Q, the amount of charge on the capacitor. So we could bring Q over to this side, then bring this over here. So it looks like we're going to get Q, or charge on the capacitor, will equal CE times 1 minus E to 
the minus t divided by rc. So there then is our, our equation for the amount of charge in the capacitor at any time. So let's make some room and we'll write this at the top of the board and see if there's any other kind of uh, information that we can get from that. So we have the amount of charge in the capacitor Q equals and we had C times E times 1 minus E and we have minus T divided by RC. But remember now from the beginning of our video we had this, so E times C, that's the final amount of charge on the capacitor. So we can put that in right here then. And we have this. Now, we said that when time T equals zero, the charge was zero, so it's better give us zero when t equals zero. And here we have, when t equals zero, again it's e to the zero, that's one. One minus one is zero, so zero times this. It does give us zero at time t equals zero. And remember now that here we have this to a negative exponent. So that would be 1 over e to the t over rc. So as time increases, this denominator increases exponentially, but this whole fraction decreases exponentially. So that means we're going to have 1 minus a smaller and smaller number. So if we try to graph this out, it looks like it'd be something like this. That can be charge. This is time. When t equals zero, it's zero. And then this eventually is just going to be such a small number. That's just simply going to be qf times one. So let's say this is our final charge on the capacitor. And then it will look something like this. So anyway, that's it for this video. Um, we just wanted to show that using our simple circuit equation, that indeed we can derive an equation for the amount of charge on the capacitor at any time. Now, what we'll do in the next video is consider what happens when you have a capacitor that's fully charged. Because one thing about capacitors is once they're charged, they can hold their charge. So what happens then if we have a circuit like this, there's no current in it, the capacitor is completely charged up, what happens if we maybe throw a switch or something um, so that we can allow the capacitor discharge? What would that discharge current look like? So we'll consider that in the next video. So that's it for this one, um, and this was, I think, the 61st video in our electrical circuit series. Anyway, the playlist is at the uh, website, digital-university.org.